but there are fears that Burundi could descend into the kind of ethnic violence seen in neighboring Rwanda in the 90s. It's been 21 years since the Rwandan genocide and the tribunal that prosecuted those responsible is handing down its final judgment. The tribunal was the first international court to ever hand down verdicts on genocide. Now, more than 800,000 people were killed in less than a month in 1994, mainly by the Hutu ethnic majority targeting the minority Tutsi. More than 90 people were later indicted by the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, from a former prime minister to local clergy and members of the media. 61 people were convicted. But some critics say the results are disappointing given the thousands of days of expensive proceedings and the tribunal's lack of power to award compensation to victims. Well, joining us now to discuss this is Yolanda Buka. She's a researcher at the Institute for Security Studies in Nairobi. Yolanda, good to speak to you today. Uh, today's judgment is the last of this court. What are the tribunal's achievements? Well, I think one of the most important achievements of the court has been to document the level of preparation uh, that took place to perpetrate the genocide. I think a lot of the genocide deniers often argue um, that the genocide was not uh, organized by members of the government. And I think the tribunal was able to achieve that, to document it, to punish people for it, and to enable the Rwandan government to then use some of that documentation for local proceedings um, in, in, uh, in Rwanda. And the critics uh, of, of this uh, tribunal uh, uh, are many. And what are some of the things they've been saying? Well, one of the most important criticism of the tribunal is how long it took for to complete the prosecution of uh, an, a small number of, of people that they were accusing compared to the hundreds of thousands that have been prosecuted in, in, in Rwanda through uh, domestic mechanisms. Obviously, the challenge with international tribunals is that the amount of resources that is spent for a limited accountability and the fact that in trying to provide due process, there are lengthy proceedings. Uh, and this is one of the challenges of international uh, criminal law and, and jurisdiction that I don't think it's unique to Rwanda um, in this case. And Yolanda, there are still some people who are on the run. Absolutely. There are still people who uh, are evading justice, suspects of the, that um, the Rwandan government has listed on Interpol that they are looking for. Um, and what we've seen in recent years is, of course, um, international, uh, the international community apprehending some of these suspects and trying them uh, in their own jurisdictions because of concerns of lack of due process in, in Rwanda. And Yolanda, will the end of this uh, tribunal draw a line under the horrific times of the 90s and, and allow Rwanda to now move forward? Well, I think the biggest challenge um, with the tribunal and the legacy of justice in, in Rwanda is the fact that the tribunal failed to fulfill um, its entire mandate to, to deal with all crimes that were perpetrated and committed during uh, that period of time. Um, one of the challenges uh, and the criticism of the court is the fact that it never um, fully investigated and prosecuted crimes committed by the RPF. And until there is a certain level of recognition of the victims of violence on the other side of the divide, I think it will be a little bit difficult to really draw the line on, on, uh, on the genocide and, most importantly, um, uh, the other victims of, of war. I think the genocide was the key moment of, of, of political violence in, in Rwanda. But of course, there are the victims of the civil war and other episodes of violence um, that uh, Rwand the Rwandan population suffered from that have not been accounted for. Well, Yolanda Buka, therefore, is in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you very much for that.